so thank you very much for the introduction. Yes, please, it's an absolute uh, pleasure. It's an absolute honor to, to share this virtual stage with so many great speakers coming after Finor, uh, quite, an, quite an undertake, if I should say so. Uh, very, very good research. It's, it's a great inspiration. So my talk is on a low frequency simulation and optimization for control rooms. Uh, my name is Luis Augusto, and this is the work I've been doing for my undergraduation at the Federal University of Santa Maria. And I'm being supervised by Dr. Eric Brandão, and the co-supervisor is Dr. Uh, Paulo Marez. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I don't take for granted their, their amazing support and, and of course help. Uh, this work couldn't be possible uh, without them. So it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure and an absolute honor to be able to work with them. So we shall start. What are the main motivations for the work? So as Christopher already pointed, uh, my main focus is on designing and build tools to help the design process of critical listening spaces. And they might be mixing rooms, they might be mastering rooms or even uh, production rooms, or of course, appreciation spaces such as home theaters and audio uh, listening rooms. Uh, and I'm focused here only on the low frequency part, which is where wave-based uh, simulations uh, happen, where wave, uh, well, Finner showed us that he can go higher and higher in the frequency range. Uh, I'm dealing here with uh, low frequency simulations only. And for that, uh, we present an open source framework for these low frequency simulations of rooms, of enclosures, that can be used together with optimization algorithms, meaning that we can expand on it and we can uh, make it, uh, we can build upon it and, 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 and couple it together with different tools uh, so we can, we can get very nice, nice results going. And more narrowly, and what is my, the focus of my, of my talk, is to find uh, optimal room shapes and source receiver positions given certain prescribed constraints. Uh, Johan already, already showed us a little bit that there are many degrees of freedom. Uh, there are many things that can be changed. And well, I address some of this of these problems uh, here. So what are the challenges? Uh, the challenges, as we all know, and well, of maybe some of you are here because of these challenges, is that small rooms are very problematic and especially in the low frequency range. This is because of course we have resonances, we have modes which are uh, separated in frequency and are well in our human hearing range and we can hear them distinctly. And sometimes they'll, they build up or they cancel each other and have huge dips and huge peaks in the frequency response, which is a huge problem. Um, furthermore, there are many degrees of freedom. There are many variables that can be changed in this problem. So how do we find an optimal combination of room shape and taking into account, uh, of course, the position of loudspeakers and listeners. And lastly, what, what does it actually mean to have accurate low frequency reproduction? Do we want a flat response? What are we looking after? We want to minimize uh, deviations in the response. How do we achieve that? So a little bit about low frequency simulation. So what do we seek to know? What do we seek to know here? We seek to know the transfer function, the transfer function between sources and receivers inside of a room with an arbitrary geometry. So we commonly have uh, some analytical solutions for the wave equation, which gives us results for, for example, rectangular rooms. But that is sometimes not enough. We need to find solutions for uh, rooms which, are, which have more complicated shapes. And of course, the way to find it out, as Finner pointed out, is using numerical methods that are able to approximate the solutions for our governing equations. And here we employ the finite element method in a Python framework. So I shall introduce Fender. Fender is, is this finite element package I've been talking about. It was developed uh, in Python and has a focus on room acoustics. It's been developed uh, during my undergraduation together with Dr. Paulo and Dr. Eric. Uh, we, we use it to, of course, simulate uh, non cuboid enclosures with arbitrary surface properties, for example, porous materials or Helmholtz absorbers, membrane, membrane absorbers, uh, well, such, such acoustical solutions which are commonly used in, 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 in rooms. And of course, Fender is uh, an expendable. Of course, we, we can write upon it, we can build it up, we can, we can add more things, and it's an open source framework. Well, a little bit more detail of what's going on. It's that the surface properties are usually characterized uh, by surface impedance. 
And this can be assigned to any region in the boundary. For example, in the left-hand side, we have a, well, a cuboid room in this case, but uh, with no materials, just rigid walls. In the right-hand side, we have the same room, but we've added a uh, at a treatment, at an acoustical treatment. Uh, for every color, there is a different material there, a different uh, solution, uh, in this case, for Helmholtz absorbers. And also, we can model the volume properties, which can be defined by a material's density and speed of sound. Uh, for example, if you have a cloud hanging, hanging from the ceiling, we can model this uh, with its density and speed of sound of, for example, the porous material. Uh, this is just a... a a little, a little uh, frequency response of the left of the untreated room and the treated room. In green, we can see all the peaks and dips, and we can see that's a very uh, non-damped room. And when we add treatment, uh, we well, we damp uh, a lot of these peaks and dips, and we end up with a with a smoother response, uh, which is which is of course uh, what we usually what we usually want. So this is just concerning low frequency simulation. This is just. Uh, plain old uh, uh, finite element uh, low frequency simulation, but in Python. Now I shall introduce uh, the optimization part of this talk, which is, well, what I'm, I'm most concerned with and I think is my contribution to, to this, whole, this whole thing. Uh, I'll show first an, an animation of what I'm about to, to describe. Hopefully it is clear, hopefully the video uh, well, displays it, it well, but this is a, just a, so you can all have a visual intuition of what I'm about to explain. So we can see the shape of the room uh, changing uh, dramatically and we have different source receiver positions, which are marked by the, the purple and green uh, dots. And well, in, in the end, we have a result, which I'll go deeper later. So how does this optimization framework works? So the question I'm asking is the following, how to select an optimal room shape and source receiver pair, of course, given constraints. And what we chose to, to use here is a genetic algorithm which, which has been used in, in engineering for a long time. It's a tried and trusted method, uh, which aims to, of course, find optimal solutions for a given problem, a problem which is not easily solvable with, for example, analytical methods. Uh, it's a search algorithm, which is quote unquote, based on the mechanisms of natural selection and evolution. So now I'm gonna run through how this optimization algorithm works, the framework for optimizing room shape and source receiver positions. So first we start by parameterizing our vertices, our edges that compose the geometry of the room. And then we can assemble this into a 3D geometry and mesh it. Uh, we then can generate vial a viable set of source receiver positions and calculate the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for the room. Which from the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, we can estimate or approximate the frequency response function for a given source receiver pairs. We can then calculate our objective function, which is what, uh, what uh, scores the room, what scores the, of course, the frequency, the source receiver pair inside of a room and, and, and says it is, it, is it good? Is it like, does it work? And then we choose the best and we check the if the maximum search time was reached. If yes, we end. If no, we restart the cycle and go back at it again. So now let's go through the steps in a little bit more detail. So we shall assemble a room in a parametric way. That means that we have parameters that we can tune and let the algorithm tune uh, to, to build the room, to build this geometry. So we do this in the GMesh API in Python. And we start by building a, a, a one of the sides of the room, the part which will be, because it is a symmetrical room. Uh, we are dealing with control rooms, which has this constraint of being symmetrical. So we start with one side, we make it symmetrical, and we give it a height. So this is the basic, uh, the basic mechanism for creating a room from parameters. And all these edges and, and vertices can be, can be changed in position, as well as the height of the room. Then we shall find a way to select uh, a viable set of source receiver positions. So we, we have a, a couple of, of parameters that we can change there. For example, 
what is our minimum distance between two speakers, the left and right speakers? What is our minimum distance from the wall, uh, the speaker from the wall? And from a couple of rules, we can generate a set of, of viable source receiver positions for which we can test and run our objective function through. We then calculate our eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for the room. So in the left-hand side, we see one of the modes. It's the 53 hertz mode. It's the fourth mode. And on the, on the right-hand side, we see what is the pressure field due to the excitation of a point source, uh, of two point sources actually located in, in well, the speaker positions. Uh, well, we do have the set of possible of viable source receiver pairs. And we wish to, well, select what is the best one. Uh, so we, we have all these curves and we, we got to score them. We got we to gotta choose what is the best one. Uh, for that, uh, we use an objective function. So just to make it clear how we get to these curves uh, from the, from the eigen, eigenfunctions and eigenvalues, we used uh, what is called the modal decomposition method, uh, which has the pro of being computationally cheaper. We don't have to run it multiple times for different source positions. But the con is, of course, that is, it is an approximation uh, of the solution from the modal method. Uh, we, could also, we could also use the direct method if we have more time and wish more precision. But for this case, we use the, well, the modal method. Now, now that we have all these curves, we got to find a way to score them. And by, by score them, I mean we run an objective function, which gives us a, a single value saying how good or how bad is this room. And here we use an approach with, which was proposed in a paper called Non-Cuboid Iterative Room Optimizer by uh, my great friend and, and well, the following speaker, Hinaoji Petroli, Dr. Peter D'Antonio, John Storick, Jonathan Hargraves, and Timo Betkin. And this objective function is based on a weighted sum of the standard deviation of the modal response or the total response of the room and the speaker boundary interference response. So we, we wish to minimize this function. We wish to make the standard deviation of both of these responses smaller, meaning we get uh, uh, all in all a flatter response. So one might ask, uh, what is a speaker boundary interference response? Uh, well, a speaker boundary interference response is an, an effect, a, a phenomenon that happens when uh, a speaker is positioned inside of a room or near room boundaries or, or, or boundaries in general. And the relationship between the position of the speaker and the room boundaries causes peaks and dips in the frequency response. So this is also a plot uh, from that same paper uh, that shows the, the speaker boundary interference response for different uh, for uh, increasing amount of boundaries. And in, in the right-hand side, we can see a analogy with uh, virtual sources uh, that causes this cancellations and, and peaks. Uh, now we can uh, watch the video again, the video I showed again, and hopefully the procedure will be clearer and we can, uh, well, you can see with the eyes of a little bit more uh, knowledge in, in, the, in the procedure uh, and hopefully it makes, it makes more sense now. And finally, we have the result concerning uh, this one optimization run, uh, which started with a rectangular room and ended up with this weird shaped room. Of course, uh, we can constrain uh, every one of those, of those parameters. We can make the room uh, go uh, bigger just on the end, or we can, uh, we can tune this optimization to our liking, to our geometrical and, and uh, spatial constraints. And hopefully it is clear that the optimized room, which is the curve uh, in blue, is way better. Is it will be way easier to treat the room uh, with, uh, with with this pre-step of optimizing and, and uh, starting to get an optimal uh, position of speakers and and listeners. Uh, well, uh, ho hopefully the procedure will be smoother of, of adding uh, low frequency treatment uh, if we if we done this pre-step uh, before. And well, 
what are some of the conclusions that become, uh, well, a framework to simulate low frequency acoustics with arbitrary shapes and boundary conditions has been developed. This, uh, uh, this boundary conditions will become uh, more clear in the next talk by Hinaoji. He will, he will for sure make it, make, make it easier to understand and, and I give some examples on, on different boundary conditions that are used. And the simulation package was successfully employed and coupled with an optimization procedure, which was our goal from the start. And a, a flatter frequency response was achieved with this optimization routine, which is, of course, what we wish to do. And the future work and one of my lifetime uh, endeavors that I, I, I wish to complete is to propose a framework to optimize the position and properties of acoustic treatments inside of a room. So for example, where should a Helmholtz absorber go? Where should a, a membrane absorber go? Where should we put uh, uh, porous materials? And do this in a automatic and, and programmatic and algorithmic way. This is a, a great quest. This is a great uh, endeavor, which I wish to undertake uh, someday. And well, just as a, as a bonus uh, regarding regarding the, the simulations and, and what we can do with open source simulations and what I've been working on my, on my undergraduation with Dr. Eric and Dr. Paulo. Uh, we are also working with simulation of diffusers using the boundary element method in Python. Uh, in this case, we, we didn't build the, the engines from ground up, uh, the finite element, uh, in the other case, the finite element from ground up, which we've done. This uh, was done using an open source solver called BMPP which is available, it's absolutely great. And we used it, uh, well, with great success. It, uh, this uh, simulating diffusers allows us to gather data, for example, for room acoustic simulations, such as scatter, the scattering coefficient, and for diffuser design, uh, which is usually, uh, which is usually uh, characterized by the diffusion coefficient. I also have uh, some data regarding the, the validation of such simulations comparing to, to experimental, experimental data, which was measured by Dr. Peter D'Antonio. Uh, and we can see that the, the scattered response, uh, the polar response of the scattered pressure is, is, is it's very nice. It, it's, it matches very well our, our simulations with, with, well, a nice accuracy. And hopefully we can see more tests on those and extend those tests to room acoustics too. Hopefully you can see some, some, some nice results in this. Uh, well, I think I went a little bit fast. Maybe I spoke a little bit too fast. Uh, hopefully I was, I was clear in what I was saying, but well, 15 minutes in or a little bit more and I'm done. Uh, so feel free to contact me uh, to talk about the topics I, I, I displayed here. Uh, this is my email. Uh, it was of course a pleasure. Uh, an honor to, 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 to share the stage with such great speakers. And well, we shall go to, to some questions if anyone has them. <laughs>